Uh, let's have a look at what's making news in print and online this morning. We're joined by the Executive Director of Think Tank, the Australia Institute, Ben Oquist. Good morning, Ben. How are you going? Uh, good. good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. It's all about borders. Yeah, the big story um, on a number of the front pages of the paper today, and uh, Phil Corey writes on the front page of the Fin Review that the National Cabinet is meeting today, and the Morrison government has declared it's a flashpoint for the future of the Federation. Sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? But it's all about the push by businesses uh, that think the borders are being arbitrarily closed too easily, the state borders in particular, and they want some protocols uh, put in place. The story says that tourism, agriculture, manufacturing, retail are all pushing for these uh, borders to be opened. And the, the paper reports there's a, a wave of a protest from business and others about these border closures. Look, it's an interesting debate and one that we're obviously going to keep having because, you know, right at the beginning, it was this suggestion of it being economy versus health. The Queensland Premier, though, says she's got both at the moment, that the economy in Queensland is actually going to be in a better shape because of what she's doing. Yeah, interesting. Uh, um, in the past, the Treasurer, uh, Friedberg, has made similar comments saying that the best economic response is an effective uh, health response. But there's no doubt there's concern among sections of the community, uh, those particularly living on the borders and some businesses, that uh, uh, politics is getting away in uh, these border closures. But I don't think that premiers are going to be rushing to um, open the borders while there is such a big health risk, not, not, not just in uh, Victoria but other states. But there are some kind of more sensible voices in this story looking for sensible solutions. Some, uh, the Canberra airport suggesting that uh, why not have a kind of bubble between uh, the ACT and South Australia and Tasmania or, or allow flights at least between those states. And as a Canberra resident, that seems to make sense. On the other hand, some kind of more far-fetched solutions that I'm not sure will go down so well. I see the, the head of uh, Santos call, calling for a special bubble for business executives and directors to be able to fly around Australia so they can run their companies. I'm not sure that one's going to fly so well, and um, I'm not sure that's going to um, uh, do Santos's image any good to be promoting business executives being flying around Australia when um, so many people are doing it tough. Yeah, tough one. I guess they hadn't heard of Zoom and Skype. <laughs> no, indeed. Hey, we're, we're, we're all adjusting right here, aren't we? We are indeed. Now, the Australian this morning, moving on, has a story on the manoeuvrings in the Labor Party over climate policy. Yeah, Mark Butler um, uh, speaking at a, what the paper says was a virtual town hall, uh, the opposition's uh, energy and climate spokesperson, pushing back against those uh, comments we've seen lately and, uh, and over some months now from uh, Joel Fitzgibbon, the opposition resources and agriculture spokesperson, who's been arguing for a less ambitious uh, climate policy. This story says that uh, Mark Butler at a virtual town hall meeting, uh, backed by a uh, prominent Labor backbencher, influ influential one, I'm told, uh, Jed Carney, pushed back against that idea and says there needs to be... Labor needs to have an ambitious climate policy. Um, uh, quote, uh, cites uh, Joe Biden um, having a, a the most ambitious progressive climate policy that has ever been taken to a US election, and that if he wins, uh, countries like Australia... Uh, with uh, less ambitious climate policies uh, uh, might face uh, border uh, adjustment taxes or carbon taxes um, if, if they don't match up to what uh, the US puts in place, something that's already been talked about uh, in, in Europe, actually. Uh, so uh, this ongoing, um, we have to say, it's a brawl within Labor about uh, their uh, climate policy. The story goes on to quote um, uh, Tanya Pluvisek a bit frustrated by it all, saying that um, well, we shouldn't be talking about splits when people are, are dying in mm. aged care centres. And I guess that's the worry for the Labor Party. With Parliament coming back next week, uh, rather than focusing on those problems the government is, is, is having, that um, this, the, these divisions over climate policy might, might dominate. Yeah, it's easy to see a line of attack being derailed. Tell us what's happening in Tassie with forest logging. Yeah, a story in the Sydney Morning Herald today also runs in The Age. Uh, a legal challenge by the Bob Brown Foundation uh, against the regional forest agreements, uh, in particular the regional forest agreement uh, in Tasmania. 
uh, a, a stunning photo of um, uh, Bob Brown, my former boss, uh, a, 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 in a burnt-out coop in southern Tasmania. Uh, the photo accompanies this story that says that the, the Foundation will be taking a legal challenge against the regional forest agreements. And their lawyer, Roland Brown, says it could set a precedent for other regional forest agreements to be found uh, illegal. Uh, the story does note that um, uh, Bob Brown's had some success in legal challenges a couple of years ago, taking uh, Tasmania's anti-protest uh, uh, laws to the High Court and winning. So uh, a big legal case. It's obviously going to run for some time that could have a wide uh, ranging precedents um, in relation to um, native forest logging, which which this court case uh, seeks to halt in Tasmania. Radio Ben Oquist, thanks for running through the papers with us. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Michael.